Should nocturnal animals be kept in zoos? If the object is to respect an animal's natural circadian rhythm and an animal has a reverse light cycle, is that jeopardizing their natural behaviors? The history of nocturnal animals kept in zoos goes pretty far back. The Roe Claw Zoo had an idea of a reverse light setup in the 1940s, but it was never implemented. The Bristol Zoo Gardens first iteration of nocturnal house was in 1954. London Zoo in 1966 opened up Bush Baby Hall to test reverse light habitats. London Zoo also opened up Chlor Pavilion in 1967 with Moonlight World for nocturnal animals. The Bronx Zoo in 1961 experimented with red light in Small Mammal House. Nocturnal animals are red blind. So while red light is visible to us humans because we see with cones and rods, it isn't visible to nocturnal animals whose retinas are comprised mostly of rods. In 1969, Bronx Zoo opened up World of Darkness. This is the first major US exhibit with a reverse light cycle, but it was closed in 2009 due to budget cuts, but will reopen in 2025. So that's something that I hope to go see myself this year. So what are the specific needs for nocturnal animals? Some species can be displayed in diurnal or nocturnal settings. An example being the vampire bats at Philadelphia Zoo. They are on a diurnal cycle right now, initially on a nocturnal cycle, but when taken off exhibit due to small mammals houses closure, the zoo found they were fairly active during the day. So now they are in a dark but still diurnal space to provide a proper circadian rhythm. Some species exclusively need nocturnal displays. Kiwis, being one, require one lux lighting, which is the lowest light level possible. Eye eyes, like on my shirt, and I've seen the Denver Zoo, also require one lux lighting, which is the lowest light level possible. But Denver Zoo has a unique setup. They have a diurnal and nocturnal setup that's rotating between their eye eyes. When I visited, I met an adult male that was on the diurnal setting and an adult female with a small baby on the nocturnal setting. It was nighttime during the day in their exhibit, but the male was fast asleep in his diurnal exhibit. Mega bats like Rodriguez flying foxes and straw colored fruit bats are adaptable to diurnal and nocturnal settings. Columbus Zoo, these Animal Kingdom, Oakland Zoo, all have diurnal settings for their megabats. Finnick foxes are also adaptable to diurnal and nocturnal. Sloths are adaptable as well to both. And then you have crepuscular animals, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. You have a lot of those being very flexible between diurnal and nocturnal. So the fusa, the sugar glider, barn owls, uh, who else, who else? Servals, brush-tailed beetongs. So many different species. I probably butchered Betong, Betong, Betong. How do you guys pronounce that word? We can learn so much about these animals that we don't see often during the day. We can study their behavior, their feeding habits, how they use their senses differently than we can, and how they become nocturnal in the first place. Now the answer to my question, do they belong in zoos? A nocturnal species needs dark, quiet spaces. If their needs are met, then yes, I think they could do well in zoos. Is there an animal that you are curious whether or not they belong in a zoo? Let me know down below in the comment section. If you have any other topics you want me to talk about, let me know down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more content like this, zoo visits, and all other things animal. Till next time, it's your boy Jungle Jordan. I'm out.